I know I'm ready to cruise and you're probably ready to cruise, but are the cruise lines ready to cruise? Kind of. At some point, hopefully in the near future, governments from around the world will give cruising the green light to cruise again. I know you're ready to cruise right now, I certainly am, but that doesn't mean that cruise lines are ready. Before we get into this week's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I bring you a new video every single week. I share with you cruise tips and cruise news so that you can master cruising on a budget. When coronavirus became a big problem back in February and March, the cruise lines had massive issues getting their crew back home. In order to restart cruising again, the cruise lines are going to have to get their crew back, and some cruise lines have barely even got their crew home. On some cruise ships, you'll find crew that have been there since the start of the year, some haven't actually gone home yet, and some have only got home kind of in July or August time. It was so difficult for cruise lines to get their crew home because the governments of the places they were visiting or the places where the crew lived would keep changing their mind. One day they would say, yeah, we're happy to have everybody disembark. The next day they would say nobody's allowed. Then they would have certain limits. It was very, very difficult for the cruise lines to get everybody home. It took months. Some cruise lines actually just decided to sail their crew home because it was much easier than trying to fly them all over the place. If you are a crew member who's trying to fly into a country that does have a travel ban, such as the US, a lot of countries are letting people travel in if they're traveling in for the purpose of working on ships. If you're flying into the US at the moment and you're traveling on a C1 or a D visa, the usual kind of travel restrictions don't apply, which is good because when they do decide that we can cruise again, they're gonna need to get thousands of people to the cruise ships. The average cruise ship probably has one or 2,000 crew on board. And to get thousands of people from across the world to the ship, that's no easy task. Air travel is becoming more popular and the cruise lines do actually have the power to charter their own flights. So what they could do is they could charter the flights that they need to get their crew back to the ship. But even doing that, you're probably going to be looking at a couple of weeks to get everybody back to the ship. Once you have got all of your crew from their home countries back to the country where the cruise ship is, that isn't it. They can't just get on the cruise ship and start working. At the moment, crew need to have a coronavirus test when they leave their home country. Then they need to fly to wherever they're going on the ship. They need to quarantine there for two weeks, then have another coronavirus test that also needs to be negative before they can start work on the cruise ship. So that's going to add on another two weeks. If you're talking already two weeks to get everybody to the ship, two more weeks to quarantine them. You can see how this isn't really a fast thing to do. Even once you've got the crew from across the world, you've quarantined them, they're not going to be ready just to start sailing as they were before. If you're somebody who's worked on cruise ships for 10 years, that doesn't mean you're going to know anything about these new procedures. So many things have changed about cruising since we last cruised, and it's going to take quite a lot of time to train all of the crew. What will probably happen is you'll find they'll be given some sort of training when they're still at home, maybe some videos to watch, but there's going to be loads of stuff that needs to be done in person weeks of training to get everybody up to the standard that they need to be at. So it is going to take quite a long time for all of the crew on board to learn everything that was in this massive document and get used to implementing it when they're doing their jobs. Of course, this is going to affect some crew members more than others. If you're somebody who's front facing, if you're working in the buffet or you're a waiter, your job is going to be quite different from what it was before. If you're somebody who works behind the scenes, it's going to affect you less. For some crew members, this could mean quite big changes and it could mean new responsibilities. It is everybody's responsibility on the cruise to look out for coronavirus symptoms and just be aware of things that they might have never considered before. Probably everybody is going to be doing more cleaning. They're going to be social distancing. So every element of the job is going to be different from what it was when they last left a cruise ship. It's going to be very, very, very important that the crew remember how important this is. That is going to be drilled into them. They're going to be sick of it by the end. But most of these people are happy to be back cruising again. A lot of the people who work on cruise ships are supporting families in different countries across the world. And to be able to work again and get a wage is something that they're wanting to do. The majority of people I've spoken to who work on cruise ships are very, very keen to get back to sea, but it is just going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy. 
There are also more technical things to think about that you and I as passengers probably don't think about when you go on a cruise. Cruise ships are held to certain standards and they need to make sure that they meet those standards and they get certain certificates for doing so. One of the big ones is SOLAS, which is safety of life at sea, which you'll probably know as the thing that is responsible for the muster drills. It's very important that all of the cruise ships have their certificates up to date because if they haven't got those, they can't get insurance and you can't be a cruise ship without insurance. You can't. It could take quite a while for the cruise ship to get all of its certificates and all of the things that it needs to sail. It really does depend how long it has been in layup for and how much it has been used when it's been in layup. Some cruise ships have been moving around and some have been reduced to really minimum levels of crew. There is a certain level where if you go below that of crew, you're not allowed to move your cruise ship or pretty much use it. So some cruise ships are heading towards that during this coronavirus pandemic. Most of the cruise ships are in what is called a warm layup, which means that they're pretty much docked offshore and they are ready to go. But some cruise ships have moved more into a cold layup, which is pretty much where you turn the cruise ship off. So once the government has said that they're happy for us to cruise, the cruise lines have decided, yep, we want to cruise. They've gone out and they've got all of their crew. They've brought them back. They've quarantined them. They've trained them and they're ready to sail. Passengers are ready. There's still one thing that they need to do. They need to kit out that cruise ship as a post coronavirus cruise ship. There are so many things that have changed. Social distancing, they're gonna have to install screens, they're gonna have to install markers, they're gonna have to install extra sinks and hand sanitizers. It is not gonna be an easy job to completely refit almost these cruise ships with all of this new stuff. The cruise lines are also going to have to make sure that they can source all of this stuff. Throughout this coronavirus pandemic, supply chains have kind of just slowed down as factories have stopped working and various other things. So it could be difficult for them to source everything that they need for all of their cruise ships. They're also going to need people who can install it, people who can plan it. That is not easy. That will take multiple weeks per cruise ship. Some cruise lines are in a much better position than other cruise lines when it comes to returning to cruising. Some already have technology built into the cruise ships that they're gonna be able to use to track and trace passengers and various other things. If a cruise line doesn't have the technology already built into the ceiling, they still can track and trace their passengers, but that just makes it a bit easier if they've already got everything they need built into their cruise ships. Here in Europe, MSC have been sailing. They've been sailing very successfully. There's thousands of people cruising on MSC cruise ships right now in Europe. There are various other cruise lines who are also starting up in Europe at the moment. But one of the benefits that MSC has is that they have this thing called MSC for me. It's a wristband and they've got technology all over the cruise ship, which they use to track and trace their passengers. When the government says we can cruise, the cruise lines need to get their crew and bring them to the cruise ship. That'll probably take a couple of weeks. Then they need to quarantine them for a couple of weeks, train them for a couple of weeks, refit the ship. That could probably be done at the same time as the training and then move that cruise ship to where it's sailing. As you can see, this isn't a fast thing. It isn't the case of we'll just hit the go switch and then we'll be ready to cruise again. I wish it worked like that, but unfortunately it doesn't. It's worth bearing in mind that the cruise lines aren't just gonna decide, yes, we're gonna sail and we'll set sail on all of our cruise ships full capacity right now. What they're likely to do is they're likely to start with one ship, two ship and build back up to their full fleet. This is good because it allows the cruise lines to kind of organize their return to cruising based on where their ships are. If they've got ships that are already fit out and ready to go and they're close to the place where they're actually sailing, they may decide to start with those ships before they start with the other ones. This is a process and it is going to take a long time, but it is going to be so worth it. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait to get back to cruising. I've been cruising since I was a child. I took my first cruise at 11 years old and I've been addicted to it ever since. So once you've got the cruise ship ready, everything on there is ready, everybody you need is on there and they're ready to go, what you're gonna have to do is move your cruise ship to the destination where it is sailing. At the moment, half of the Carnival fleet are anchored down in the Bahamas. We've got cruise ships anchored off the coast of the UK. Most of the Norwegian fleet are over in Europe or Asia, and that's not necessarily where they're gonna be sailing. It could take a week, two weeks, up to a month to get these cruise ships back to where they're actually sailing. So that just adds on extra time. The next video that you need to watch is this one, which will show you where all of the cruise ships are right now and what they're currently doing.